Okay, hi year 12, this is Mr. Lim again. Um, this is now the second video on proteins about the primary structure. Okay, so we're going to be learning about the primary structure, um, what it is and how uh, you work out what the primary structure is. Okay, so what is the primary uh, structure? Well, first of all, the protein only works if it's in the correct shape, which is determined by the composition and order of the amino acids that it is composed of. Okay, the composition and order of those amino acids is called the primary structure of the protein. Okay. So what it means, uh, so the primary structure is uh, determined by the DNA within, so actually we'll go back a bit. Okay, so effectively what that means is that here you have amino acid number one, you have amino acid number two, you have amino acid number three. That composition, where it is made out of one, two, and three, and the order determines the shape of the protein and determines its function because that protein there might have a very different function to this protein here, where even though it's the same composition, it's in a different order, or it might have a different composition or a shape to this one here, where I've got different amino acids, um, amino acids, uh, different composition, um, and a different order. Okay, so it's the composition and the order that is the primary structure. Okay, and effectively what the order is of those amino acids and what those amino acids are. Okay, um, the amino acids, the primary structure is determined by the DNA within the cell. The ribosomes which make the proteins read a copy of the DNA that makes its way out of the nucleus and then uh, the order of the DNA is translated to the order of amino acids. And if you want to learn more about that, you can do uh, biology or human biology. They go through, through protein um, translation and transcription uh, quite heavily. Okay, the amino acids are then found floating around uh, the cell and then combined together by the ribosomes to build the protein one monomer at a time. Okay, so let's say here is your mRNA, which is the uh, copy of the DNA that is brought out into the nucleus. Okay, here's your ribosome. Okay, this mRNA has like little codes and stuff. So it says, okay, look for uh, the code um, for the amino acid that has that matching code. The transfer RNA over here carries the amino acid number one, okay? And so that structure here floats here, and if it matches, it sticks that amino acid uh, number one, it sticks that amino acid number one here, right? Then the ribosome moves across to the next thing, and then it looks for the appropriate tRNA, which might carry amino acid number two. Two, okay, that goes over to here. If it's the right one, then amino acid number two gets linked to amino acid number one, okay, and so on and so forth. Okay, so the idea that these amino acids are floating around, uh, they float to the ribosome, the ribosome decides whether it's the right one and then sticks it to the last monomer. And the monomers continue to grow or to be attached on until you have a polymer. All right, the DNA also tells the ribosomes when to start and when to stop. Okay, so um, in some of the polymerization processes, the starting and stopping is quite random, but the DNA tells the proteins when to stop so that it exactly makes the same protein over and over and over again. Right. Um, once the chain of amino acids is complete, further modifications must be done to ensure that it folds into the correct shape and turn into a viable protein. Okay, what that means is that, okay, here's all my amino acids in one long strand. What we actually need to do is turn that into something that looks like this, right? It's some sort of squiggly shape, so we need to fold it in the right way, okay? And then hold it together so that it doesn't unfold out of that shape, okay? And those, uh, that shape is very important to its function, all right? 